Our favorite national pastime, our favorite national pastime is find someone else to blame. There's no place else, nowhere else where you can find this more frequently played than on the field of healthcare costs and health insurance. I'm Jay. I am the author of Maximize Your Medicare. The 2019 edition is here. You can see it on the website, which is which will appear in a couple of moments at the top of your screen, www.maximizeyourmedicare.com. The 2020 edition is going to be released next early next year. You can pre-order it now on Amazon. It looks like this. It is available on Amazon as pre-order. It'll come out in early January 2020. Anyway, so I'm on Twitter today and I came across this tweet. It's by a medical doctor and it is discussing the idea of surprise medical bills. So for those of you who know or have been keeping up at all, you can go to a hospital and then thought that you were covered by your health insurance, but then what ends up happening is you get a new specialist or you get an, a lab test where what you thought was in network, you've gone to an in network hospital, for example, but the specialist comes in and that person is not covered by the network or your lab, you have a lab test and they get sent out to a laboratory for analysis that the place where they're, that analysis is being done, they're out of network. So what ends up happening is you thought that they were in network, but then reality is they're out of network. So in the strange case, this has created, you know, actual bipartisan agreement. We do agree on something that something needs to be done about it. And so of course the, you know, it's very difficult. It's very, very complicated. I don't think that there's any doubt about that, right? And there, the issue here is there are certain elements of truth to everything, but that doesn't mean that every party is blameless here or that a party is blameless. And let's just take a look. And that's the point of today. That's the point of today. This is such a complicated situation. It's going to take input. It's going to take every stakeholder to do something about it, right? Let's just take a look here at this. So this came out today, just within the last couple of hours, actually. It's a tweet by a, a number of doctors and they made this video. It looks compelling. It looks compelling. Let's take a, let's take a watch. Surprise medical bills are a huge problem for our patients. Patients get medical care, have insurance, and still wind up with thousands of dollars in surprise bills. This is bankrupting America. There's no question about this. Someone you know is having this problem, right? Which in other words, that as you probably know, mo many American households, they don't have $3,000 in order to deal with a household emergency. So this, this we can understand. Americans, it needs to be fixed. And now Congress is ready to pass legislation to eliminate surprise bills. But insurance companies seize the opportunity and use the bill as cover to increase their profits. They're lobbying to negotiate the contract. Okay, <laughs> let's back off right here. Okay, so clearly here in this video, you can see it. The doctors are pointing out the insurance companies are the culprit. Okay, and yes, is the cost of health insurance high? No question about that. No question about that. We know this to be the case. And someone you know has health insurance, can't pay the deductible, can't pay the coinsurance because the deductible is high. $5,000, $10,000 family deductible. We know this. Physicians and hospitals. And this would be a disaster for patient care. The current bill has a provision called benchmarking. And insurance companies love this. Because benchmarking would allow insurance companies to set prices on medical treatment and drive up costs. In just two years, implementation of benchmarking in California. Okay. <laughs> Stop, let, let, let's see if I can get the IT correct here. So what ends up happening? Yeah. All right. This is 
a commonly mis a misconception that people very very frequently get wrong. All right, the cost of health insurance and the premium, the copays, etc., is a number. It's the result of the cost of healthcare. It's the result of the cost of healthcare, right? In other words, when you go and figure out, okay, you, let's just say you have a different example. Let's take an easy example. Let's call it oranges and orange juice, okay? You do not derive, you don't get calculate the price of oranges from the cost of a, you know, a carton of Tropicana at your grocery store. That is not how this works. This is backwards, bass backwards. okay? If the price of oranges triples, okay, then the cost of orange, orange juice, which is a product of coming from oranges, is going to be, in, is going to increase, right? It is not the other way around. It is not the other way around. In the same way, the cost of health insurance is not the driver of the cost of health care. Health insurance is the result of a probability of the cost of incurring health care costs. Who drives that? Doctors, hospitals, period. And so what ends up happening here is that it's very nice You've got doctors here, highly educated, highly held in our society, right? And before we go any further and say, okay, well, this is just a guy, Jay, you're just the guy who hates doctors, wrong again, right? I grew up in medical household. My late father, medical doctor, right? So I am not coming from the starting point that all doctors are to blame and doctors are, you know, this awful group of people. No. However, this, find someone else to blame, this is misplaced. It's misplaced academically right from the jump. And this I find quite incredible because what ends up happening is that groups of people, stakeholders, highly educated stakeholders, have warped the message. And, he, and it, it gets worse. Let's continue. Have a brain bleed or a heart attack? You're going to want a specialist in your hospital. In rural areas, some hospitals may even need to close. This could change the entire landscape of health. Insurance companies would get all the power while public health sucks. Does any of this surprise you? CEO salaries are in the millions. And it's at the expense of doing what's right. The only way we can stop this is by reaching out to elected officials. Every single one of you can help, and you don't need to be a healthcare professional. You just need to care more about patients than CEO salaries. Go to appupenmiddle.org and fill out a petition to send a message to our elected officials. Congress needs a better bill. Like New York's, which reduced surprise billing issues and protected patient access to care. We need to fix surprise billing without putting patients in this. We need to put patients over profits. Patients over profits. Patients over profits. Patients no. over profits. Patients over profits. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, patients over profits. All right. Patients over profits, right? Here's the problem with all of this. And so let's just bop out of here. What aren't you being told here? Right? This sounds too obvious. It sounds too obvious. There's a reason it sounds too obvious. That's not the complete truth. Right? Is it in part true? I don't, I'm not disputing that. Right? This is not disputing the fact that this is in part true. What is also true? What is also true? You don't see them proposing what, what other proposals do they not put in here? They don't put in here the following. The doctors could have accepted the HMO payment rate as the full payment rate 
right? In other words, health insurance, they are two groups, HMO, PPO, right? People know this, right? HMOs, you've got to have a referral from a primary care physician. PPOs, you can go to specialists without. HMOs have narrower networks, PPO, wider networks. Complicated stuff. Behind the scenes, guess what? Many doctors do not accept the HMO. Why? They don't want the lower payment rate. Oh, where was that in the video? In other words, patients over profits, right? Patients over profits. Okay, doctors. Why don't you then just accept the eight, the lowest the lowest common denominator for revenues for all of your practices, all of your services? You want to you want to have a consultation about some neurology, neurological consultation. You don't take the HMO, you do take the PPO. What you're doing this by mistake or by randomness? No, you're not. No, you're not. I can name names. I won't, but let's just let's just call it physical therapy practice. Intentionally enrolling in the PPO, intentionally bypassing the HMO. Why? They want the higher rate. Period. So before we have these nice little slogans, hashtag patients over profits, pithy, you know, ways, yes. Big compliments to them, right? To, to take the initiative to be first to find someone else to blame and point at the most obvious insurance company. Clear, easy, convenient, incomplete, completely incomplete. Doctors could have simply taken the HMO payment rate and not the PPO payment rate, in which case, and, and that's not only doctors, right? That can be labs, that can be home health care, that can be skilled nursing facility, that can be you know, everything. Every healthcare provider can simply take the lowest common denominator as the proper payment rate, in which case this benchmarking thing doesn't exist whatsoever. You don't see them proposing that as the possible solution. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I've got the perfect answer, the perfect solution. All I'm doing here is saying, look, this is very, very complicated stuff. There are a lot of stakeholders. They're big. They're smart. They have reasons for their perspective, their opinions. Okay. But before we simply just watch nicely made videos by young, smart people, highly educated people, and just take their word as wholesale. And it's easy and it's convenient to do so in our society. I get it. But you can see it here. Two minute video looks nice. Incomplete. Incomplete. So before we jump to conclusions, we need to flip over the rocks completely. See the other perspectives to see which ones make sense. That doesn't mean the answer is easy to come by. We have 300 million people in this country. If it were that simple, we would have already solved it. I'm Jay. I'm trying to keep you up to date just so we can be more even handed. We don't have a society right now where we listen to the other side. There's no good civil discourse. Unfortunately, that is the case. But this topic and the financial impact of this topic, too big to ignore.